Mr. and Mrs. Blanding, starring Cary Grant and Betsy Drake. There's probably an old saying that he who sees a piece of wool lying around better not pull it or he's apt to unravel a big ball of yarn. Jim Blandings has just walked into his office at Guider, Guider, Fleet, and Blot, and little does he know that one of these treacherous pieces of wool, in the guise of an advertising jingle, is lying right there on his desk. Margaret, what's this? What, Mr. Blandings? Yip, yip, off, off, woof, woof, bow, wow. <laughs> buy woof, wow, dog food and buy it now. If it tastes like liver, if it tastes like steak, then it's woof wow dog food, make no mistake. What about that? <laughs> and there's music. And there's music? That's the jingle Mr. Guider chose for the woof wow television program. Oh, why wasn't I consulted about this? This is... Well, Mr. Guider knows what you think of television, and you know how he loves dogs, oh, Margaret, so... tell you what. Ransack the office until you find the twerp that broke this. Bring him here. I want to insult him. Oh, he doesn't work for Guider, Guider, Fleet and Blot. Oh, Mr. Really? Guider decided to tap the freelance market this time. I'd like to tap him with a hammer. <laughs> Mr. Guider loves it. Oh, uh -huh. Well, in that case, get in touch with whoever wrote it and get a release from it. Well, that's the catch. He's out of town, don't know where. But I left word for his agent to call me. Well, we can't use the jingle without a release. What's his name? The agent's name? No, no, the man who wrote the jingle. Oh, well, never mind. Just get the release. Tell whoever that is on the phone I've gone home. Uh, yes, sir. Guy to guy to fleet and block. Oh, Good evening. Mar Margaret, Margaret, I leave all matters concerning Woof Wow to you. Good night. Good night, Mr. Blanding. What? Uh, oh, yes. You're Mr. Molliott's agent. Well, who is Mr. Molliott? Oh, oh, he wrote the jingle for Wolf Wow? Oh, he'll sign the release as soon as he gets back to town. Oh, well, thank you. Goodbye. What? Oh, he only writes jingles for the fun of it. Oh, isn't that nice? Well, goodbye. What? He's really a playwright. Oh, isn't he clever? Uh, yes. Yes. Uh, good night. <laughs> The ball of yarn is unraveling fast. Poor Jim. And now Muriel, Jim's ever-loving and ever-helpful wife, is going to do her part to make it unravel even faster. Ever since Jim came home from the office, Muriel has been carrying through her carefully planned campaign to trap Jim into doing her a favor. And what a favor. Listen, she's discussing it on the telephone with Mrs. Gray, head of the Lansdale Drama Society. No, I haven't asked him yet. Mr. Blandings has got to agree to be in our play. He will. Just give me time, Mrs. Gray. Must you whisper? Yes. Well, I'll leave you to it then. Good night. Thank you. Goodbye. Au revoir, but not goodbye. Sorry I stayed so long on the phone. Another glass of wine, dear? Oh, yes, thank you. Uh, what a nice idea, Muriel. We haven't had a bottle of wine with dinner for a long time. That's true. Well, bottoms up. No, Muriel, no, no. No? No, no, no. Never say bottoms up with wine, particularly at the dinner table. You're so right. My Jim, you are very continental. Yes, I suppose I am continental. <laughs> <laughs> ah, me, this is the life. You really think so? Oh, I do, and it's because of you, Muriel. You're the perfect wife. Oh, Jim. Mm -hmm. It's true. I come home from work dead tired. You meet me at the door, hang up my coat, bring me my slippers, the evening paper, and now a wonderful dinner. A bottle of delicious wine. What have I done to deserve this? It's what I hope you're going I've to do. I've done that... nothing. You're much too good for me, Muriel. Bless you. Oh, darling. And I'm much too clever for you. I won't do it. <laughs> won't do what? Whatever it is you're going to ask me to do. I was only going to beg a little favor of you. Well, I'm going to beg a favor of you. Of course, dear. What is it? I'm going to beg you not to beg a favor of me. <laughs> but you don't even know what my favor is. Now, whatever it is, I'd like to remind you that I haven't recovered from paying my income tax, and I have a wife and two small daughters to support. It hasn't anything to do with money. Uh -huh. Would you do something that would help build a new firehouse? Lansdale needs one. Muriel, you promised me it had nothing to do with money. It doesn't. Would you play in the luncheon party? Play in the... You mean make sand piles in the spinach? What do you I'm, mean? I'm perfectly serious. It's to raise funds, and we need a handsome man. 
You want me to go out to lunch and play? Play what? The luncheon party is a play. We want you for the lead. You what? You're the only one who can do it. Muriel, I'm not an actor. I haven't got time to be in a play. That's the joy of it. What's the joy of it? Even though you're the lead, you only have one speech. Oh, well, that's the most sensible thing I've ever heard about a speechless actor. <laughs> about time. Now, allow me to explain. The luncheon party is a play about people at a luncheon party. You don't say. And they wait around for this man to appear who is you, and he does, out mm. of the middle of the stage. And everyone wonders who he is, and that's the end. Just one speech. I can't believe my ears. You mean this man, who is me, comes out of the middle of the stage and has one speech, and that's the end? Oh, that's the end, all right. Where did you get this play? That's the best part. It's a new play. It's going to open on Broadway. But the author, Mr. H.M. Molliot, says he's glad of the chance to try it out here first, away from the critics. And the money goes toward a new firehouse. We need a new firehouse, Jim. Oh, yes. <laughs> Where is this H.M. Molliot? I'd like to shake him by the teeth. I don't know where he is. In hiding, no doubt. Now, don't be absurd. He's a terribly important man, and this is a wonderful play, and mm. I've got a marvelous part. Mm -hmm. Please, Jim, say you'll do this. We need you. Lansdale needs oh, you. Oh, go on. Lansdale doesn't need me. I only asked a small, tiny favor. There's a pause. Go on. Go on. I don't know what our marriage has come to if we can't lean on each other during a time of crisis. Oh, you can lean on me, Muriel. Go ahead and lean. <laughs> Without you, we can't do the play. Oh, yeah. That means no firehouse. Oh, now, Muriel, please, don't cry, darling. I'd do anything for you. Then you play the part of Cyril Glenville in the luncheon party? Uh, Cyril Glenville? No, Muriel. No, Muriel. Never in a million years will I play Cyril Glenville. <laughs> Your cue. Cyril. Oh, ring the bell again, please, Mrs. Blanding. Cyril Glenville. Jim. What, 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 what? Please pay attention, Mr. Blanding. <laughs> when we ring the bell, you must pop up. Pop up from where? The trap door in the middle of the stage. <laughs> I haven't been able to find it. Why, of course not. It isn't there. Oh, I see. The trap door isn't there, and you want me to pop out of it. Oh, right <laughs> please, Mr. Blanding, please. Oh, there's no holding me back, eh, Mrs. Gray? <laughs> <laughs> the trap door has yet to be cut out of the stage. Ah, yeah. It'll be directly under the table. For the time being, when you're supposed to pop up, just give a little jump. You, you want me to pop up under the table? Have you gone mad, madam? I'll knock myself out. <laughs> The table will have been moved a moment before your entrance. Oh, that's very shrewd. Well, all right, ring the bell, someone. No, Hyacinth. No. Are you, are you Hyacinth? Yes. Oh, well, really, Hyacinth. Have you no self-control? Oh. <laughs> Kindly return to stage center, Mr. Blandings. Uh -huh. Then, Mrs. Blandings, you ring the bell. Okay, have you got that straight, Hyacinth? Roger. No, no, I'm Cyril. <laughs> Thomas and William, move the table. Uh, very well. The bell, Mrs. Blanding? No, no. Yes. Oh! <laughs> hey, tell us what's happened now, Mr. Oh, Blanding. I gave a little jump like you told me to and stepped on my own foot. <laughs> well, continue, please. Well, oh, thank goodness I landed on this foot because I don't have coins on this foot. But Mr. If I... Blanding, continue with the play, please. Continue with the play, please. Oh. Never did. Enough is enough. That's what I always say. Jim, stop that. Stop what, Hyacinth? Now, do what Mrs. Gray tells you to do. Now, there's the bell. Now, pop up and speak your speech. Okay. Ouch! Oh! Oh, oh really? Oh, oh. I looked in vain upon the moon's face and saw no answer, yet the stars fell and the clock strikes my heart beats. Oh, Jim's oh. crying. Jim's crying. Oh, wonderful. Now, don't stop crying. Finish the speech. No! Oh! You're so moved that you've moved me, Mr. Blanding. Oh. Now begin again and do the same thing. I will not. I'm crying because I jumped and stepped on my other foot, the one with the corns. <laughs> Muriel, I don't want to be an actor. Don't cry, dear. You aren't. <laughs>
the Lansdale Drama Society is presenting The Luncheon Party, a play by Mr. H.M. Mulliott, who also, unknown to Jim Blanding, is the writer of the Woof Wow television jingle. The Luncheon Party, which has been in rehearsal for two weeks with Jim playing the lead, is being presented to raise money for a new firehouse. And considering the fact that the old firehouse burned down only the other day, this theatrical enterprise is very important. Jim Blandings hates the play and hates himself in it. But always a man to do his duty. He's rehearsing at home right now with Muriel. Wait a minute, Muriel. Are, are you sure you didn't burn down the firehouse? <laughs> what? I believe you heard what I said, Hyacinth. <laughs> I refuse to answer your shit plan. That seems most peculiar to me that on the day I announce my resignation from the Lansdale Drama Society, the firehouse burns down. You know it was the cat's fault. The... On with the play. I am not convinced it was the cat's fault. You know perfectly well that the firehouse cat was playing with kitchen matches, lit some, her tail caught on fire, oh. and before she fortunately put out her tail in a bucket of water, she set the firehouse on fire. Well, <laughs> who gave the kitchen matches to the cat? <laughs> that is the question. We're getting a new firehouse, Jim. <clears throat> on with the play. Now, there's something rotten in the state of Lansdale. It's not only my acting... That is your opinion. Well, Muriel, if you think my acting is rotten, why would you want me in the play? I didn't say your acting was rotten. No, but I did. You realize that tomorrow is dress rehearsal. Unfortunately. How did you say I could get in touch with that cat? Is the name listed in the telephone directory? <laughs> why do you want to get in touch with the cat? Well, if we can get away with arson once, we can get away with arson twice. <laughs> I'll supply the matches this time. We'll burn down the stage and fry the luncheon party. <laughs> It's a good thing we're married, because if we weren't, I wouldn't marry you. Oh, Muriel. You answer it. I'm too crushed to move. You're too lazy to do anything. I don't think I like you very much. Hello? Mrs. Blanding? Yes? Uh, Mrs. Gray, exciting news. Yes? Mr. H.M. Molliott is coming to Lansdale to see the luncheon party. Is that good? Perhaps he won't like it. He wrote it. No, I mean how we're playing. Oh, he'll adore. Now, I thought, as long as you and Mr. Blandings have feet in my guest room, that Mr. Moffat... Hey, but I... Radishes. That's as it should be. He'll be here tomorrow to give us some pointers at dress rehearsal. Tomorrow? But... I have to go now. Until tomorrow, then. But... Good night. <laughs> you were talking to Mrs. Gray. How do you know? Well, you said but so many times. I knew you were talking to an old goat. <laughs> um, uh, Muriel, answer me. Wasn't that a good joke? One of the worst I've ever heard. Uh -huh. Shall we go on with the play? We'd better. Mr. Molliott will be here tomorrow. How horrible. It's wonderful he's staying here with us. Ghastly. An honor. We look forward to it. With dread. Why can't he stay with Mrs. Gray? Because she has an aunt in her guest room. Only one? Well, that's no problem. <laughs> hundreds in our guest room. Send her a jar of ant paste with my compliments. And send her Mr. Molliott. Fuff. Just like that. Well, we better be good in the play. I don't want to be embarrassed in front of such a distinguished man. Oh, go on. What makes you think he's so distinguished? His play is a can of soup, if ever I've seen one. Mr. Molliott graduating. Well, no. Didn't you tell me? Would it have made a difference? No. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to leave early today, Margaret. Wish me luck. Dress rehearsal this afternoon. Dress rehearsal? Yeah, the play I'm in. Oh, oh. didn't I mention it? Oh, well, just well, I didn't. Terrible. No wonder I have these bags under my eyes. I've got to dash. Well, good luck. Oh, oh Mr. Blandings, we still haven't got that release yet. Mr. Guider wants it. Hmm? What release? Well, you know, yip, yip, barf, barf, woof, woof, bow, oh, wow. Yeah. The man still hasn't come back to well, town. That's the television department's department. Oh, no, Mr. Guider says it's yours. I call the agent every day. Yeah, well, don't bother me now, Margaret. I've got to leave. We'll discuss it on Monday. Okay, Mr. Blandings. Have a good time. Thank you. I won't. Very well, boys. There can't be much more sawing. We must rehearse. Ma'am, the wood is hard. Mrs. Gray, let me ask you, why wasn't this trap door cut days ago? Because, Mr. Blandings, we had to get permission from the school board. Yeah, cutting a hole in our high school is a serious offense. Well, and jumping out of that hole is ridiculous. It'll be most effective, Mr. Blandings. Yeah, it'll be very effective if someone forgets to move that table in time. <laughs> Tell me, why does the table have to be over the trap door? 
Why not cut a trap door in the table? I'll pop through both of them. Mr. <laughs> Mr. Marliott will be here any second. Kindly adopt a more professional attitude. A more professional attitude about what? Jumping around on a high school stage, reciting boulder squash, being directed by the head of some woman's club? I am president of the Lansdale Ladies, Mr. Well, Blanding. Don't get me into a discussion about presidents. <gasps> I... Hey, gee, look out the window. It's the cops. Oh, that must be Marliott. Oh, I asked the mayor for a police escort. Let's go look out the window. Oh, did you say Mr. Molliop drives a pale yellow convertible? No, but that must be Mr. Molliop. Oh, dear, where are my glasses? I can't see. Where are my glasses? Where are my glasses? Did you mention a police escort? Yes, a local honor. Oh, this is the first time I've ever seen a police escort chasing the car it's supposed to be escorting. <laughs> Mr. Molliop has a chauffeur. He can hey, stay. Hey, but... the cop caught up with him. <laughs> From what I can see from this window, Mrs. Gray, the chauffeur is on his way to the county jail, and I suspect that the chauffeur is Mr. Molliot. Oh, where are my glasses? Your jokes fall on dead ears, Mr. Blanding. Well, Mr. Molliot in jail, we can't do his play, can we? Of course not. Well, then I'm not telling jokes, madam. I'm speaking of a miracle. <laughs> You, Mr. Molliot? That's what they say. I'm Lawyer Prim. Well, the town of Lansdale, under the leadership of Mrs. Cornwallis Gray, is raising bail. One more donation and you're out. And what about the one more donation, friend? Uh, that's why you need me. You won't get it. Uh, I suggest that you plead guilty to speeding and driving without a back license plate and throw yourself on the mercy of the court. Now, hold it. Why won't I get the one more donation? The bail is high. Everyone that can has donated. But the one man that should, won't. Well, why won't he? Because he wants you to stay in jail. <laughs> well, what has he got against me? He can't stand your play. As long as you're in jail, the play won't be done. Who is this man that hates my play? Uh, Mr. James Blanding. 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 You know, I've, I've heard that name before. But... Advertising man. Firm of Guider, Guider, Fleet and Block. Oh, yes, yes, of course. He keeps bothering me for a release. Uh, well, I'll bother him for a release. Mr. Prim, you've got to persuade Blandings to visit me. How? Do you think how? I'm a busy man. Oh, and you can mention the fact that I hate my play, too. <laughs> Perhaps that'll intrigue him. It intrigues me. No, Mr. Prim, I will not visit Mr. Molliot. Mr. Blandings, do you like being responsible for a man being locked in a cage? Anything that belongs in the zoo belongs in the cage. <laughs> Have you ever seen a bird beating its frail wings against bars? Well, let me think now. Imagine it, Mr. Blandings. Imagine it. Oh, I'm doing that, enjoying it. Let that buzzard beat his wings to sticks. I don't care. Oh, very well, sir. Good day. Oh, uh, by the way, Mr. Molliot told me to tell you that he hates his play, too. No, he did He hates his play. He does. Worse than that. <laughs> Well, he's the only other person in town that does. Perhaps I had better talk to him. So, if you'll agree to help with the bail, I'll be out of here. I'll leave town. I'll, I'll leave the country. Mm, no, but you still expect me to be in your play tomorrow night. As a favor to me. Uh, when is it supposed to open on Broadway? Three days after I sail on a freighter for Holland. <laughs> Mr. Molliot, I like you. I'll make you a deal. <laughs> you will? Yeah. I'll see that you get out of jail if you call off the play. And have word get back to New York that Lansdale called it off, that it was no good? Oh, I should say not. All right, then goodbye, Mr. Molliot. It's every man for himself, it, you know. It, uh, uh, just a minute, Blanding. Sir. You're right. It is every man for himself. Then what do you say? Call off the play? I'll tell you what I say. Yip, yip, arf, arf, woof, woof, bow, wow. <laughs> that strike a bell? Not you. Yes. H.M. Oh, Molliot, famous playwright, author of a woof wow jingle. I should have known. Well, I, I've only proved that I, too, recognize television, that I, too, can always use extra money. Yes, Mr. Blannings, you should have known. Now, if you want me to sign that release... <laughs> Oh, my gosh. It's dark down here under the stage. You said it. Now, men, get this straight. When the bell tingles, you hoist me through the trap door. Both of you together now, you understand? Yes. Okay. And when the bell rings, uh -huh. hoist, 
One, two, three. No, no, no. Bell ring. One, two, three. Hoist. Hoist. Yeah. When will the bell ring? After they move the table, about a half a minute after. Mm -hmm. One minute's almost time. Get ready. Yeah, I heard some kind of noise. That must be the table. Must be. Get ready. Is that it? Must be. Hoist. One, two, three. Hoist. <laughs> Why, Mr. Blanding's back so soon. <laughs> How long was I unconscious? I don't know, dear. You don't know. Well, on with the play, dear. We had to go on. Oh, sure. We brought you to the second it was over. Yeah. Well, I just wanted you to know that I was so worried about you that I only took three curtain calls. <laughs> three? <laughs> Nobody loves me. Why wasn't that table moved? It was going to be. Going to be, indeed. You popped up too soon. Right on cue. I heard the bell. I popped up. Hoist! There wasn't a bell. A good humor wagon passed the theater and you were back. <laughs> Why aren't you in a good humor? <laughs> I'd like to be in a good humor right now. Covered in chocolate. Well, cheer up. The play was a great success. Uh, when you shot through the trap door shouting hoist and hit your head on the table and shot right back down again, it was very effective. I bet it was. The audience loved it. Mm. Oh, my. Mr. Guider will never know the sacrifice I made for his darn wolf wow jingle. Well, that reminds me. There's a telegram here from Mr. Guider. Yeah. Well, read it to me, darling. My eyes aren't back in focus yet. <laughs> um, leaving for Phoenix in the morning. Join wife and mother-in-law. Well, that's nice, but why tell me? As long as release for Woof Wow dog food jingle has not been forthcoming, decided drop whole thing and concentrate on talking dog approach. <laughs> Expect talking dog in my office when I get back or else. Signed, Rufus W. Guider. Oh, no. He doesn't want the jingle, eh? Apparently not. I went through the trap door and knocked myself out for nothing, eh? For the new firehouse, dear. Wants talking dog, eh? What an unusual request. I, I've got just one little thing to say. What's that, dear? One little thing. I'm going to set fire to Mr. Guider and let the new firehouse put him out. I'm going to visit the cat that burned down the old firehouse and ask her to introduce me to a talking dog. And then what? I'm going to tell the talking dog to bite Mr. Molliot. Is that all you've got to say? No. What else? Yip, yip, off, off, woof, woof, and hoist! Again next week, same time, same station, for Mr. and Mrs. Blanding, starring Cary Grant and Betsy Drake. Tonight's show is written and directed by Nat Wolf and transcribed in Hollywood. Don Stanley speaking. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Blanding's has been a presentation of the United States Armed Forces Radio Service.